Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're diving into a topic that's been weighing on my mind for some time, the decline of cubing YouTube. If you've been following the cubing community, you might have noticed a shift. Today, we're gonna explore why it seems like cubing YouTube is dead using a couple case studies of popular channels that once thrived, but now seem to be struggling. But first, to get to this point, we need to talk about the rise of of the cubing industry in the last couple years. The rise of cubing YouTube is a fascinating story of how a niche hobby turned into a thriving online community. To understand this, let's look back at how the explosion of interest began. In the early 2010s, the Rubik's Cube and other twisty puzzles were starting to gain renewed popularity, partially due to the appearance in popular media like the World Cube Association competitions and more online presence between people's personal Instagrams and media presence between world records getting smashed every other week. The online cubing community began to grow as enthusiasts shared their passion through online forums, blogs, and eventually YouTube. One of the first significant players was Speed Cube Review. Their focus on detailed reviews and unboxing of various cubes captured the interests of cubing enthusiasts. They provided in-depth analysis of cube performance, which was invaluable to both beginners and advanced solvers. Another influential channel was T-Noodle, also known for engaging tutorials and speed cubing content. T-Noodle's charismatic presentation and clear explanations made it a go-to resource for those looking to improve their solving skills. Then came JPerm, whose energetic and innovative approach to content quickly made him a favorite in the cubing community. His videos ranged from solving tips and tricks to cube challenges, all presented with a unique style that resonated with many viewers. JPerm, being a channel that is still relatively popular today, gives us kind of a brief look at statistics for this channel. We're gonna go ahead and look at his statistics from the past years, from his beginning of his channel, all the way to 2020, where I feel like the cubing community peaked. And as you can see, he had very rapid growth in the mid sections here, leading to his top of growth in around 2020. Now, the success of his channel and the other channels that I listed were driven by a combination of factors. First, the growth of the YouTube platform itself provided a powerful tool for creators to reach a global audience with YouTube, gaining almost 5 billion users within that time span. The platform's recommendation system also helped popularize cubing videos, introducing them to new viewers who are eager to learn about the fascinating hobby. The second thing that contributed to the overall growth of cubing YouTube was the rise of competitive speed cubing with more and more WCA competitions and impressive feats of cubers like Felix Zemdigs uh, were widely discussed uh, in the community. This visibility helped drive traffic to cubing channels. And third, the diversity of content played a huge role. Channels began offering a wide range of videos from basic tutorials to advanced techniques, cube reviews, and even entertainment-based challenges in shorts, kind of like my channel here. This variety catered to all levels of interest and expertise, keeping viewers engaged and returning to more, while more and more people found out about the cube and decided to learn it for themselves. Now that we've talked about the spark in the cubing community that caused it to gain so much more traction in the first place, now we can finally talk about the decline. Now, let me give you a quick overview of the decline, and then we'll look at my personal channel statistics, and then we'll look at some other case studies in the cubing community. So I think that there's a couple factors that contributed to the decline of the cubing community. First, being the saturation of content. As the cubing community grew, more creators entered the scene. Hundreds and hundreds of YouTubers led to an oversaturation of content, with a lot of the cubers stealing content, saying bad things about non-cubers, and just overall leaving a bad taste in each other's mouth. Channels that once stood out now compete with a multitude of new voices which can dilute their impact. Number two, changes in YouTube's algorithm. 
YouTube's recommendation system constantly evolves and channels that were once favored by the algorithm may have found that the algorithm no longer favors them and their visibility reduced as the platform shifted its focus. Number three, a shifting audience preference. As the community grows, so do the preferences of its audience. What captivated viewers a few years ago may not hold the same appeal today. New trends or styles may overshadow older content. And things like TikTok and Instagram Reels being invented has caused a shift in the platform between the three, almost having the viewership on some bigger channels. Number four being creator burnout. The demands constantly producing high quality content can be overwhelming. Burnout can affect creators' abilities to maintain their content output and quality, leading to a decreased engagement. And we've seen this with people like JPerm, who is now posting less videos than he did in the past. This mixed with overall viewership decrease can lead to some very, very bad statistics for his channel. And the final thing would be evolving interests. The interests of viewers are not ever going to be static. As cubing grows, new hobbies or interests may emerge, leading viewers to explore other content areas. There's only a select few people in the cubing community, like myself, like JPerm, who have been cubing for many years and have only stuck to that one hobby, briefly branching out but always coming back to cubing. The typical lifespan for a cuber is around three to five years within the hobby before they kind of get outdated and sick of all the cubing content. This mixed with the decreased amount of PBs that they have can cause someone to either stop cubing completely or slowly move themselves out of the hobby. Now let's take a quick look at some case studies. I'm gonna start with myself and my own personal cubing channel because I don't want this to come out as malicious to anybody, but more of a point as of showing you guys how the cubing community has decreased. I started my channel in December of 2022, and it took me to about May of 2023 to get monetized. At this point, I gained a multitude of views and was averaging around 10 million video views per month. This slightly declined in October of 2023, just a few months later, and I averaged about one-fifth of the total views. And this is typically because the people in school have their finals and big exams for the year and have less presence online. Shortly after, once Christmas break came around, my channel peaked again getting around 12 million video views a month, which was absolutely insane. And as we keep looking on the chart, we see that once everyone went back to school, the views dropped again and slowly pittered out, both rising and dropping per the season, coming to where we're at now. In the last six months, my channel has experienced very, very large decline in viewership, giving me only a couple thousand views per month. Now, this might not be something to scoff at for a little channel, but coming from someone who was getting 12 million views a month, dropping to this point was almost a 95% decrease. Where I used to get 500,000 views per day, I am now averaging around 7,000 views per day. This is not ideal, but for someone like me who takes the money and donates it, I purely make videos for fun, and so I'm not too worried about views, but it is overall stressing me out. Now, let's look at JPerm. As we can see in January of 2022, he got about 13 million views per month on average and peaked of March of 2022, getting 34 million video views in one month, which is absolutely insane. As the time went on for him, we can see that every single month he got less and less views on average with the occasion of a small spike by around 5 million views, pittering down to right now, September of 2024, where he is projected to get only 5 million views. For JPerm, from his peak, he has lost about 80% of his viewership, which is absolutely not great. One final example we're going to look at is going to be Cubehead, a fan favorite here. 
we can see when he started his channel in around 2021, he was averaging about 1.6 million video views. This continued to grow as his channel grew, showing a new type of content to the community where it peaked in June of 2023, getting around 38 million video views per month. This quickly dropped off to its overall low in October of 2023, where he had roughly one fifth of that audience. It peaked back up again in November and December, getting him back to his normal numbers. But for the remainder of 2024, his channel has been mostly dead, getting an average of around 5 million views per month. And this is really odd. Cubehead as well lost around 85 to 90% of his viewership on average, where even though a YouTuber in a different category, not cubing, would have his ups and downs, the YouTuber would continue to grow over the years. As we can see with both Cubehead and Jperm, both of their channels have been sizzling out, which leads us to one belief. The audience just isn't there. Now, do I think that the cubing community is gone? No, not at all. I think that the cubers are constantly practicing on their own, going to competitions, but they're just engaging less in social media, which for people like Cubehead and Jperm, who do not have any other job besides YouTube, this could be really, really bad. Not having enough money to pay for their rent, food, or other expenses in life can be absolutely detrimental. So taking a look at all of these graphs and all of this data, is cubing YouTube dead? I think that cubing social media has definitely declined. And even though it's still revolving, there's still plenty of passion and creativity found. Now, to see growth again, like we saw in early 2022 and mid-2023, the only thing we can really do is continue evolving as YouTubers, showing different types and styles of content that has never been seen before. I think that at this point, if we continue the route we're going, cubing YouTube is going to be dead and less people are going to be finding out about the hobby, meaning that in maybe five to 10 years, if we continue at this rate, there will no longer be cubers. So I appreciate you guys for watching this video. If you made it to the end, comment YouTube. So I know you made it to the end and I'd appreciate if you guys subscribed and liked the video. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. And if you enjoyed, please share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep this conversation going and support our favorite creators through these challenges. Until next time, keep cubing, stay curious, and let's embrace the future of our cubing community.